this stuff is just nuts. I mean, it's just nuts. The, the, the losing has, I think, just driven everyone. Well, the fans deserve to feel, you know, batty about this and angry about this. But we saw it, saw it again today in this game a little bit. You know, you got bad defense. Uh, there's no sign of aggressive base running. And I know they were down 11-2, to so you got to be a little careful. It is final. It's 11-7. Um, and then you got the manager going off last night. And uh, I, that one was really strange. And, of course, it, you know, he got the, he got the little pat on the back treatment by the, by the local media. You know, oh, you know, Ali's just passionate. Okay. Okay. Uh, why does Anali do something to, you know, just kind of get the team going or, or maybe, uh, you know, uh, brushing up on the fundamentals that have become glaringly mediocre, base running, defense. Um, where's the general manager? Uh, is, are, they, are they ever going to do anything in terms of this rotation? And uh, then you're, you know, you're listening to the broadcast. You don't know, you don't know if the Cardinals are losing eleven to two or they're up eleven to two because everything's swell. <laughs> Jim, you were up serious. I know this sounds like I'm doing a radio shtick, and I'm not. It's like this is absolutely nuts. I mean, everything. It's not just the way they're playing. It's. The stuff the manager says, the stuff you hear in the broadcast. I mean, just you know, you know, earlier this week, Nolan Arenado, he con- he doesn't understand why people are making such a big deal of the fact that they were, I think, ten and twenty at the time. What what is it that these people expect? I tell you what. What do they expect? They're now ten and twenty two. What are, what are they looking for exactly? I'm I'm questioning that. I you know I once used the term recently sense of urgency. I think that's going out the the window. I'm wondering if they have a sense of uh, what's the more, more different just the sense of reality maybe. Yeah. It's like come on guys, do you know where you're at? As you just pointed out, you you're at the very bottom of what's going on right now in Major League Baseball. I, you, you just got swept by the Angels. The Angels are a good club, but it's just I, I you know, at anybody, home. anybody, anybody could could come in here and win, yes. uh, win, win the whole series or just win the series because that's been happening. The Cardinals, after today, are uh, five and eleven at home. That's embarrassing. It is, and they, um, I, you know, I, I repeat they. Well, actually, I got to make sure of this, but they haven't won a series at home since they took, <clears throat> pardon me, two out of three from um, Toronto. They, they did split four with the with the Pirates, but they can't win at home anymore either. And um, you know, this thing keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And you know, the manager um, feels like he's got to defend his team, you know, against uh, the critics or. And and there there was something Freud, Freudian in there, and we'll let we'll play this for you uh, here in a minute. Sure. Because B- Ben Fredrickson asked a perfectly logical question because the, the 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 fans were really very 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 loud and vociferous and booing the Cardinals off the field, and you don't see that not for a long time, and may, maybe n- never that loud. And you know, and Ali kind of cut him off, and you know, went on this tirade about um, you know. Uh, you know, do you, do you think? Uh, oh, you know, you, do you think you think they're more frustrated than we are? And went on this whole thing like defending his team's honor or something. And does a manager of a t- ten and twenty two team that plays mediocre baseball and is fundamentally shoddy and has just reprehensible starting pitching? D- does a manager in this situation does he get the? Le- I didn't realize he gets to lecture everybody. Oh. He, you know, I, I didn't realize that he's in charge, and he's, he, you know, he, he's, he's going to tell them, he's going to tell people how they respond to this. Haven't you lost? Uh, haven't you lost in a way the platform to be so shameless like that? Who is he to tell people how to feel or to sort of do this? Well, we we're more frustrated than anybody. We we care more than anybody. What, really, really. Well, if everyone is so frustrated and everyone, I'm talking about Cardinals people, they're so frustrated and they're so determined and they wake up in the morning uh, 
consumed by, well, how do we improve? They're consumed by this. They're not sleeping. When they get up, that's the, what they think about all day. Um, well, how come you, if you're putting all this energy and dedication and uh, trying to proclaim that you, how much you care, and then why shouldn't that lead to some wins? Right? And if not, why are you bragging about it? Because I tell you what, and we're going to play this. Aren't you obligated, uh, you know, when he talks about them, you know, working hard, playing hard, um, nobody cares more than we do and all this other stuff. Can I at least introduce one little concept into that stuff, which is um, putting putting in a great effort, being frustrated and determined to turn things around and all, all these other things. Um, let me let me interject something. Uh, isn't you know kind of your job? <laughs> so what? You, so what do you? What do you? you know, Ali's getting like Schilt. Wh- what do you want us to do? You're sort of bragging about how hard you work, how much you care. You you get out of bed and you're consumed with the idea of how do we get better. You, you want bonus points for that? You want what? What do you? What exactly is it that you want? That is what your job is to give a damn. That is what your job is to work hard and get sick of losing and doing something about it. That is that is the minimal obligation you have. So what is this? You know, like uh, this this plea for whatever he's pleading for. If you listen. You're supposed to give a damn. You're supposed to give max effort. You're supposed to care. You're, you're supposed to just dig and dig and dig until you get out of this thing. But I'm, I know I'm being um, redundant, but isn't this kind of a, your, minimal, or your minimum job requirement? What, you want credit for that? Because <laughs> you go to work... Every day and you give a damn and you're, you know, you have to deal with some tough stuff at the office, let's say. You know, um, I think I think I think there's a lot of Americans and many, many St. Louisans who can claim the same thing, except they don't whine about it. They just go to work and do their best. They don't want the you know, they don't want ice cream cones for that. Right. They they they, they don't want. um someone to, uh, you know, to give them a plaque because they show up to work and they do their job and they work hard. This guy, um, I don't know what he wants. I'm still confused by what he wants. But to actually, in effect, kind of sit there and take all this pride with your, your, your chest puffed out about how hard you work. How much do baseball players make? How much do the managers make? How much does a second-year manager make? who um, right now has been showing that he's not worthy of the job. So, so what do they want? You're 10 and 22. You're off to the fifth worst uh, start in franchise history, going back to 1901. What is it that you want us to say? Oh, you guys are our heroes. Oh, nobody works harder than the St. Louis Cardinals. I mean, is that what you're looking for? And because some fans got fed up and booed, which is a rare occasion, and if that annoyed the manager, well, he was bragging about how he's been in this organization 17 years and blah, 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 blah. And, I, you know, I, we know what it's like. He didn't say Cardinal way, but he was just basically saying, the cat's the Cardinal way. That's, we do these things. We, we, we try to get better and better and better. Yeah, in other words, you're, you're doing your job, which you're getting paid for. But... I don't. I just don't know. I just don't know anymore. Um, I, you, you know, uh, speaking of his like seventeen years in the organization, which I respect, he has been a long time Cardinal. But the fans that fill the ballpark every night, no matter no matter how the good team, how how good the team is or isn't, uh, I tell you what. They've been showing up in strong numbers, basically second highest average home attendance for a long time. I think one year they might have been third. 
they've been doing this passionately standing and su- behind and supporting this franchise for a hell of a lot longer than 17 years, pal. So uh, let them uh, let them let them boo, let them vent their frustration. You vented your frustration last night. Would you give the fans the same courtesy? You know, so he didn't attack the fans directly or anything, but it irritated him, the idea that someone would even ask him about fans booing. It irritated him. It annoyed him. Dude, you're 10 and 22. The, the club is a mess. And it's not all your fault. And you, you're put in a tough position because you have to come out and face the cameras every night. But, yeah, this is what it's like when you stink in a town that's used to winning and has a certain standards for baseball. You don't get to feel sorry for yourself. You don't, you don't give the, you don't, you don't, well, he has the right to do it, but you shouldn't be given sermons, like basically trying to say you care more than everybody else. And that does, that does apply to the fans. Because when he talks about people on the outside, you're talking about anybody who's on the outside, but the fans are a big part of that outside group. Media is too. But, I, you know, on and on and on. Where? Where does he get off? I'm serious. I, I I just don't understand this. I mean, this ego, this ego is uh, humongous for a second year guy who inherited Goldschmidt and Arenado, and went 45 and 41 outside the division last year, and totally screwed up the Philadelphia playoff series by blowing game one. And um, he's going to lecture people about how they should act and in effect do a, a protest against, you know, the booing, even though he didn't say that, but he, he absolutely meant that because all this came about during a question about the booing. Tony La Russa never did that. Seriously. I covered a guy 16 years. Him and he and I get, you know, w- would uh, would bang head sometime, but we'd always have a frank discussion. And the the you know the one thing Tony Larusa said over and over and over and over again, you know when people would ask him about booing, or people would ask him about media criticism, or they would ask him about give him a chance to kind of like feel sorry for himself. He he would always cut that stuff off. He's the exact opposite of this guy. Larusa, one of his favorite sayings when these kind of things came up. Let me quote it again. Um, if you can't take the heat, go find something else to do for a living. Right, Jim? I mean, it's one hundred percent true. That's and what... and and yet this guy just uh, you know uh, he's he's now in charge of a public discussion or something. You could never. What an embarrassment. Yeah, you can never, ever be the manager, coach in any profession and sit there and rip your fans. I just, I, and he did, he did not rip them directly, I, but, right. but he, he was sending a question, message, yeah. he, and, and we, knew, we knew what he was talking about. Right. You just can't question, why are you upset? This is, what, this is their passion. This is what they do. And, I, you know, it is your job, but never, ever – question your fan base when especially when you're bad now if you're be, yeah, yeah be very careful about what you say about yeah. fans especially when your team is a disgrace it, it just you can't do that uh you know you made the, the mention these fans are here long before you and they'll be here long after that's i think something that the good ones get it but those that don't last long don't understand you know when people are frustrated hey we won here before and now you're not well that wasn't me well you know what that's us as the way fans look at it, and that's the way you have to include them into everything that you're doing. Not necessarily decisions, but you have to include them as, hey, you're part of this too, and uh, we're working on it. You know. They're doing their, the fans are doing their job. They're showing up uh, 40,000 strong every night. That's exactly right. And this has been going on for years and decades even. Uh, they're doing their job. So I don't want to hear, you know, you like taking a uh, question about the booing from fans. And – without ripping the fans directly, but you take that opportunity when someone asks you about the booing fans, you take that opportunity to kind of change the subject in a way, and it becomes this whole thing where you're saying, like, um, 
Well, well, he did say to Ben Fredrickson, he says, "What, what you you think the fan you think they care more than we do?" <laughs> That's an inappropriate comment. Yeah, because you're showing that you don't get it. And if you have to go, you have to go on, uh, on you know, deliver a sermon from the from the mound, all, and and you know, you defend your team about you know effort and how much they care and all. Your insecurity is showing because you're the manager of all this and you cannot get a response from your team. So he uh, he gave the big talk last night, the fiery sermon, and um, I, I was curious to see Jim. Mm-hmm. So, look, I don't believe in these things so much, but every now and then it happens, you know, whether you're Herb Brooks or someone else. You know, sometimes a manager or a coach will go like this, you know, and just sort of just make a make a bunch of noise. And and maybe it's really he's doing it so the players will see it and hear it and remember, you know, that he um, he's fighting for them against all these evil people, you know. Right. And I thought, um, we're going to find something out on uh, Thursday afternoon. We're, we're going to find something out. We're going to find out real quick. This big show he put on last night uh, that I think was in part designed to send a message to the players and to get the players more fired up and motivated. The score was 11 to 2 like early in the game. So yeah, it was you know, rough, you're right. Well, so uh, my point being like, well, uh that sure worked great. The rah rah. Oh man. I tell you what. I tell you what. And the thing of it is, he's not going to get fired. Because Mazalak would have to admit to another managerial mistake. But it's going to get interesting because if this continues, um, there's got to be a shakeup. And I'm not even – again, I don't even, I don't even consider Marmol being fired possible. Not because the general manager doesn't want to uh, direct even more of the glare on him. How, how many? You know, hey, hey, Mo. How many managers is this now? You fired two. Now you got a third, and we're talking about since the middle of July of um, 2018. That's not that long ago. So what, you got third manager. You, you really gonna? You really gonna? You hire a fourth? <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness. Uh, so I don't, but there, listen, there's got to be some kind of a shakeup. And uh, let me let me tell you what it does not qualify as a shakeup. Demoting or optioning out Jordan Walker and to take his roster spot, you bring up uh, Taylor Motter. That's not a shakeup. That that is right. not a shakeup. That's not, not that's not a shakeup. Or you know, bringing up a relief pitcher. That's not a shakeup. I think I think a major shakeup is due soon. Not saying right now. Well, I know a lot of you listening, and I hear you. You would say, "Well, yeah, it is. It's they got to do it now." I'm just like you. Know, I'm. It's my pragmatic side. I. I don't. I don't believe that Mo will do it now, or Dewitt will suggest something now. So I'm not even talking about them doing it now. But it's got to happen soon. And uh, let me tell you this: uh, bringing Adam Wayne right back. And this is not a shot at him, although his worshippers and he himself will consider that because you're, you, you, there is no tolerance for anything except total worship, you know. Yeah. Um, but plugging Wayno back in, that's not a shakeup. Having him in the dugout's not a shakeup. You just had a guy who was your once and future ace give up two, two, uh, nine hits and ten earned runs in two and a third. And the front office has yet to e- even touch the rotation. Now they might, they may flip uh, Stephen Stephen Matz to the bullpen and get uh, Matthew Libertor up here. But if you're talking about a shakeup, that's where it begins. And maybe you lost your opportunity because you were so passive and complacent in the off season. For the third year in a row, you didn't think you had to address your starting rotation, other than the Matz thing, and that's a disaster. 
uh, they have yet to do anything about their starting pitching. And the starting pitching continues to just basically push them in a hole in deficits that they can't come back from. And it, they don't provide innings, which transfers the load to your bullpen, which has shown signs of duress, and it's on and on and on. So when, so when are they going to – do they even know that the starting pitching sucks? <laughs> do they even realize this? Because we heard, uh, we heard John Mazalak telling Tom Ackerman on Sunday that, in effect, he, he, I don't really understand this. And saying, well, starting pitching uh, is, not, is not the reason we're not winning. Yeah. What is he talking about? I mean, he was in denial, what was it, five days ago? Total denial. That's why I say, uh, Mr. Jim Hewitt, that's why I say that this is as cuckoo and wacko as anything I've seen in my time watching the St. Louis Cardinals because they are in complete denial. And instead, the manager wants to basically, you know, push down the idea that there's anybody out there who cares more than they do. Win some games. Nobody wants your speeches. Your players didn't obviously pay much attention to it because they came out flat. Oh, they did score the first two runs. But don't try to win the press conference. You know, you're not, you, oh, don't, yeah. you, don't get, you don't get credit for that in the standings. Nobody cares. Don't worry about winning the press conference. Worry about winning games, okay? That's what fans care about. 